is also the lecturer for our department, Sir Pro Lecture. Okay. Uh, Professor Sasaki got his PhD, PhD degree in the University of Tokyo in uh, 1976. Then he spent six years in Europe as a postdoc in, uh, let me see, Max Planck Institute, Niels Bohr Institute, uh, Institute of Physics, uh, Hartwig University, okay. Then uh, he went back to Japan as a professor in Hiroshima University in 1982, okay. After that, he worked at the Yokawa Institute uh, in Kyoto University from 1990 to his uh, retirement in 2013. Okay, uh, the Professor uh, Sasaki's uh, research area is in uh, theoretic physics, range from non perturbative approach to quantum field theory, soliton theory, integral system, etc. He also served as an associate editor of nuclear physics for 18 years and uh, as an edit editorial board member of Journal of Applied Physics. And he is also a fellow of the Institute of Physics and a, a recipient of Dai Daiwa Andrian Prize in 1998. Now he is uh, with us here in uh, NTU. So let's welcome uh, Professor Sasaki. Thank you very much for the introduction. I feel very honored um, to be asked to give a colloquium at Taida. I have been visiting this place for many times. And today, I'm going to give you a talk about recent development in exactly solvable quantum mechanics. This is a quite interesting thing. But the, as you see from the title, it's just quantum mechanics. So everybody who has learned linear algebra and simple analysis and quantum mechanics can understand this talk. And it also I want to emphasize that the, for doing uh, first class research, some, uh, still you can do with a uh, minimum amount of knowledge. You only have to think hard. Yeah? And whatever uh, in my talk you feel uh, uncertain or not very clear, just interrupt me and I'll give you I will try to give you an explanation as much as possible. So I will uh, make a brief introduction and tell you a new dis about new discovery that is the main part of the, well, how this new discovery, what kind of discovery is, and I will tell you yeah, how, to, how to understand this uh, new uh, orthogonal polynomials, etc., as a, a main part of the eigenfunctions. And the rest is just a quite uh, detailed examples. And about family and uh, outlook. Okay. And uh, what I mean uh, by exactly quantum mechanics is quite simple. It's the simplest quantum mechanics, one dimensional, one degree of freedom. So you have a Hamiltonian or Schrodinger operator, second der uh, derivative operator plus potential, as you know very well. That they, these are defined uh, in a certain interval or infinite interval. And uh, as you all know, that uh, you have to solve so-called the eigenvalue problem. So the eigenfunctions of the, <clears throat> the given Hamiltonian and all, so determine all the discrete eigenvalues, en, and the corresponding eigenfunctions. If they are uh, obtained exactly, then we call such a system exactly a solvable quantum mechanics. So the pro problem is that to find, to understand how such things are so solvable and to give you the explicit form of the potential. So these are essentially the same thing that you learn in physics, quantum mechanics theory. 
So, and I think you have learned at least this uh, harmonic oscillator, this so quadratic uh, potential. Then the energy in this uh, normalization is uh, two times n, n is equal to zero to zero one to infinity, and the eigenfunctions are so ground state function of phi zero x times LB polynomial. Ground state wave function is simply the Gaussian e to the minus x square over two, right? And the next thing probably you also learn, it's called radial oscillator. Instead of the, oh, you know, on top of this uh, quadratic uh, potential, you have uh, one over x square potential. So the x is between zero and infinity here, minus infinity and infinity. And let's make a g positive, you have greater than one, so that this is positive. Then the energy is just uh, twice of this because it's you fold down the harmonic oscillator. Then you get this kind of singularity. So it's uh, four times n. And the eigenfunctions is again the ground state wave function times Lagel polynomial. And the argument is x squared. And here, this ground state wave function is Gaussian times x to the power g. That is g coming in here. Another example is called uh, Horseshoe Teller Potential. Sorry, this x squared is a mistype. You just forget about this. It has a sine square x potential, um, 1 over sine square x plus 1 over cosine square x. So this is a singular at x is equal to 0. This is singular at x is equal to pi over 2. So the range is between 0 and pi over 2, and we take g greater than 1, h greater than 1, and the energy is quadratic in n. And the, again, the eigenfunctions are ground state wave function times Jacobi polynomial with the cosine of 2x. And the ground state wave function simply sine of x power g, cosine of x power h. So these are the, <coughs> the simplest examples, and I'm uh, referring to these examples in, the, in my later talk. And I, I think you know this guy Teller, who was, uh, who made this uh, hydrogen bomb. And I read also that uh, Professor Kroll was a friend of Teller. Somehow they knew each other. Okay. So the, this is uh, the motivation. Well, as, it, as you all know, the quantum mechanics is the cornerstone of modern quantum physics. So definitely do, doing quantum physics, you know, quantum mechanics, and especially exactly solvable, is uh, quite meaningful. And the high, also in the quantum, uh, when you learn quantum field theory, that is uh, quantum mechanics of infinitely many degrees of freedom that you learn that uh, so-called Heisenberg uh, operator formalism. And based on them, you learn creation and annihilation operators or coherent states, dynamical symmetry algebra based on these. These can also be quite well understood when you learn exactly solvable quantum mechanics. Another motivation is, uh, so as you know, the Schrodinger equation is uh, the eigenvalue problem of a self-adjoint Hamiltonian. So they have real eigenvalues, as everybody knows, and mutually orthogonal eigenfunctions. So this also gives you a unified uh, framework of discussing all uh, classical orthogonal polynomials. So not the, there are many experts working on orthogonal polynomials. They discuss one orthogonal polynomials very you know, specially, but the this thing is going to give you unified framework of classical orthogonal polynomial and also changing uh, a way of deforming them. And as I've shown uh, uh, in the previous examples, this, uh, when we discuss orthogonal polynomials from quantum mechanics, then you, uh, the orthogonality, orthogonality wave function is obtained as the square of the ground state wave function, eigenfunction. So it's a quite simple. 
But when you discuss orthogonal polynomial per se, then you discuss them uh, using th uh, three time recurrence, etc., and try to find the orthogonality wave, wave, fun wave function. But when you discuss from quantum mechanics, these are obtained really. But the <clears throat> In a sense that I have a different uh, motivation. I had a different motivation for this kind of thing. That is, uh, so when you can find a new exactly solvable quantum mechanics, so I thought very naively, then uh, it's, it's, uh, eigenfunctions should contain new orthogonal polynomials. So I thought I might get uh, some new orthogonal polynomials. <laughs> like uh, Elmit and Lagel and Jacobi. But that's uh, later I found out that is not the case. And somebody called uh, Bochner in Germany, 19, uh, 1929, has given a no-go theorem that he has shown very clearly that any uh, orthogonal polynomial satisfying second order differential equations are the so-called classical orthogonal polynomials. That is, uh, Elmit, Jacobi, uh, Lagel, Jacobi, and Bessel. So this shattered my whole naive hope. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is the simplest uh, way of looking at uh, the Bochner's theorem. So if polynomials Pn satisfying three-term recurrence relation, and second order differential equation. So the second order, second derivative, first derivative. They must be the so classical orthogonal polynomial. It's very easy to see. When you just put in the lowest constant, then this are zero, this are zero, so lambda zero must be zero. For the first order polynomial, then this is zero. So this is constant, this y prime is constant, and this is first order. So the degree of tau of x must be less than 1. Yeah? And when you put uh, p2, this is second derivative is constant. First, so first derivative is first uh, degree polynomial, second degree polynomial. So their degree of uh, xi is simply less than 2. And uh, the degree 2 polynomial can be well, divided into those having two equal roots or two distinct roots. Two equal loops, then it's called, uh, it's going to give you the Bessel polynomial, which is slightly unfamiliar in physics. But the two distinct one, you can choose plus minus one and Jacobi. And if this degree of xi is one, you can choose, the, it's a, it's, it has a root at x is equal to z. Then Gagel and LB. So this is uh, the no go theorem, which stand against me, right? But whenever you have any theorem or no-go theorem, these th theorems always have some preconditions. Yeah? And if the condition is uh, uh, not used, then uh, you can have a different result. So in this case, polynomial satisfy differential equation and three-term recurrence relation. So there are some hope, and uh, you can get it. So the simplest thing is that instead of differential equation, you can consider also difference shredding the equation. This is the kind of thing uh, Heisenberg mentioned many years ago. When you go down in, into the microscopic ladder downward, the smaller, uh, smaller distances, maybe you might have uh, discrete structures where may the dif difference equation might govern the world. So if you, instead, if, instead of differential shredding equation, you, you, you choose difference equation, then you definitely you have a uh, second order differential equ uh, difference equation which has a nice uh, property. But unfortunately, there are a lot of clever people before me, and they have uh, uh, found so-called uh, Classical orthogonal polynomial, Wilson, Askew Wilson, or Raka, or Kulaka polynomial, in all, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 polynomials. So this is uh, already done in a sense. 
But the, there are also possibilities that the polynomials having holes in degree. When you have a three, then this uh, will break the three term recurrence relation. So that is a possibility. I, am to, I will talk about this later. But again, the third possibility is just polynomials starting at degree, rather not constant, maybe degree one or two or three. And if you think this, then you might find, you might be a little bit worried that how about the completeness. But if you can get them as a solution of the complete shading equation, the, uh, the completeness is not a problem, I will show you later. But this is also the reason why the experts in uh, orthogonal polynomials didn't think of this kind of uh, deformations. Of course, when you combine these all, so polynomials satisfying different shredding equations and starting at degree greater than one and having whole, these also are gonna give you new orthogonal polynomials. So this is the idea. And the result is that the, uh, I have found uh, infinitely many orthogonal polynomials satisfying second order differential equations. And so this, these are deformations of uh, Ragel and uh, Jacobi and uh, Elmig, in a sense. And the first uh, thing, these uh, three people, uh, one a Spanish guy, Gomez Ujate, and uh, the Canadian, Cam Nicky Kamlan and Robert Nielsen, they gave uh, an example of uh, Lagel, deformation of Lagel and Jacobi polynomial starting at degree one. And this, uh, uh, Belgian lady can also gave uh, it's a quantum mechanical uh, formulation of such polynomials. Then uh, my colleague Odake san and myself, in uh, about uh, ten months later, constructed uh, orthogonal polynomials, uh, Jack Lagel and Jacobi deformation, starting at any degree, not just one, two, three, infinity. So these are called the starting point. Then I also generalized uh, them to, to so-called multi-indexed orthogonal polynomials depending on uh, n uh, uh, indices, uh, integer indices, which are for, for degrees of polynomial type seed solutions. I'm going to explain it, used for constructing this kind of orthogonal polynomials. And they start at uh, certain degree L, L greater than one, plus uh, degree N plus N. So this N is uh, just as ordinary orthogonal polynomial, counts the number of nodes. You know, P of, uh, elite polynomial HN has always uh, zero, N zero in, the, in, in them, in the real place. And this uh, N again here counts the degree uh, node and they form a complete set. So they, <clears throat> so they, these polynomials do not uh, satisfy three term recurrence. And these, since they are the main part of the eigen solutions of exactly solvable shredding equations. And if we use uh, as a seed solution, just eigen functions, these are gonna give you just polynomials having nodes, zero holes in the zeros. And this one uh, is a little bit, uh, might be unfamiliar to a third year student or so, but the, these uh, uh, orthogonal polynom new polynomials are the solutions of so-called Fuxian differential equations with uh, <clears throat> three plus L regular singularity. And all these L extra singularities are so-called apparent singularities and located outside of the orthogonality interval. So these are just a, what are the discoveries. So this, uh, these are just introduction. Then I will tell you how to construct these orthogonal polynomials. How they are these? <clears throat> and the starting point, is just a exactly solvable 
quantum mechanics. So you you so everything that you know, the all the eigenvalues and the eigenfunction. The first three examples, the Hermi, Lagel, and Jacobi, are such examples. And <coughs> this this such Hamiltonian, you can call it. Uh, you can make by adjusting the constant part of H, you can make it positive semi-definite, and uh, it can be called uh, semi-definite, uh, factorized semi-definite Hamiltonian. I will explain it later. And the, these are the just the ordinary, exactly solvable quantum mechanics. Then the tool I'm going to use is uh, so-called Darbu, or Darbu uh, transformations. So when you have uh, one solution of the Schrodinger equation and another solution, let's call it seed solution, by using this seed solution, you can construct a new Hamiltonian, just uh, taking uh, lo second uh, logarithmic derivative and minus two, is a new, so poten potential is changed by this, then uh, a new, you get a new Hamiltonian, then, uh, from the old solution with a seed solution, you can find a new solution with the same energy by just uh, uh, taking its derivative and uh, linear function, its uh, logarithmic derivative on it, which can be written as a, a ratio of a Ronskian and divided by the original one. This is a uh, Dalbu transformation. This is uh, uh, the property of the Schrodinger equation. Every Schrodinger equation can have this. So this is quite general. <coughs> and the, then the, the point is that you can find a good seed solution that is uh, with a negative energy and having no zeros in between. If it has zeros, then uh, it will give you a singularity. The potential gives you a singularity in between. So this will no longer be a good quantum mechanics. So the two is just the Dalbu transformation and some seed solution. And I'm going to explain this now. Yeah. The <coughs> so the exactly solvable Hamiltonian with the eigenfunctions and they the inner product is always positive and orthogonal. And by adjusting the constant part of H, you can always make the lowest eigenvalue zero. Then the, the eigenvalues of them is either zero or positive. These are called positive semi-definite. And you learn in the linear algebra that any Hermitian operator matrix having positive semi-definite uh, spectrum, you can always express it uh, as a product of two matrices, A and it's a Hermitian conjugate, A, A, Daga. The same is true in uh, quantum mechanics. You just have uh, <coughs> take uh, the ground state wave function. The ground state wave function is always, uh, uh, has no node. So you can choose, it's, uh, it has no zero. <coughs> just uh, A defined, first of the derivative times a log minus logarithmic derivative of that. Then A dagger is mi minus on this. Then you, you put, uh, you can calculate A dagger A, that is simply dx, uh, d dx squared, I mean this and this, times V, V is just the second derivative of phi naught divided by phi naught. So anything can be, <coughs> Any potential with this uh, condition, you can always express as a dagger a. And if you can express it with a dagger a, you can do the next trick. Uh, trick. It's always change the order between a and a dagger. By the way, uh, this this is uh, when you meet uh, this kind of thing, you have to be very careful. This because. This is a so-called paradigm of square root. In a sense that A and A dagger are a kind of square root of the Hamiltonian. And you, I think you meet this kind of structure very well in many places when you have a 
crying Golden equation, it's square root his Dirac equation. And you, so when you do that, there you can get Nobel Prize. And when you have a, a supersymmetry, uh, this Poincaré symmetry, and when you take it's a square root, it's going to give you a supersymmetry. Again, quite interesting thing. This <coughs> is uh, that kind of structure. <coughs> so <coughs> we rewrite Hamiltonian by using this, uh, just take any seed solution, and the A, just uh, again, ddx minus log of a seed solution, then the A dagger, then the A dagger is again this thing. So Hamiltonian can be written is A dagger d1, A dagger d, A d1 times this uh, energy, right? So whenever you have this kind of structure, you can just change A dagger and A and define a new Hamiltonian as just A, AD1, AD1 dagger plus this, yes? Then it always, it satisfy this so-called um, intertwining relation. H1 is uh, just a <clears throat> AA dagger plus epsilon. So you just multiply A from right so this. Then you just, when you look at this, you just take, pull out A here, and this is the old Hamiltonian, so H. So H1A is AH. So when you apply original eigenfunction of phi n, this is going to give you just energy, epsilon n phi n times A d1. So this, a, this apply phi n. So this a d1 times phi n is an eigenfunction of the new Hamiltonian with the same eigenvalue, en, right? So this is, and therefore, <coughs> it is the eigenfunction of the new Hamiltonian with the new, same eigenvalue. And we, when you have uh, many seed solutions, then apply this to another seed solution, it is again, a seed solution of the new Hamiltonian with the same energy. And <clears throat> the norm of this uh, new Hamil uh, eigenfunction, you can easily calculate. Just uh, here, a, a, so you just move this to a dagger. So a dagger a is h minus, h minus epsilon n, epsilon v. So this is going to give you e, e n minus epsilon v. So when you choose this energy to be negative, then the, uh, the norm is always positive, so there's <coughs> no singularity. So, <clears throat> this, when you repeat this n times by using the virtual, uh, this uh, certain seed solutions, then you get new exactly solvable quantum mechanics. So it's very simple, right? And the, the only thing you use that when you <clears throat> Repeat the same pro process by using this uh, Ronskian. This it, the Ronskian will be multiple Ronskian. So the new Hamiltonian after m using m uh, different seed solution is just a original Hamiltonian minus uh, logarithmic derivative of the Ronskian of all the <coughs> uh, seed solutions. And the new eigenfunctions are just Ronskian. Just you put the old eigenfunction. So these are, everything is well known. So Ronskian is just a taking derivative. So everything is exactly countable. And the norm is uh, just uh, repeating the same thing, just original energy minus the energy of <coughs> all the seed solutions. The, so these are chosen negative, then uh, so the positivity of the norm is not lost. So this is, uh, again, I'm show, telling, showing this uh, positive Teller potential. So this, as I told you, that the one over sine x square plus one over cosine x square. So as I told you, that this sine square of x has singularity at s x is equal.